Imagine a bomber so advanced, it can sneak past even the most sophisticated defenses, adapt to future missions, and do it all at a cost that won't break the budget. Meet the B-21 Raider, America's latest stealth bomber, and a likely game changer in modern air power. Now, this isn't just a concept airplane. The Raider has been flying for over a year, and we've even seen photographs of it flying at high altitudes. Here's the thing, the Raider is not just a weapon, it's a glimpse into the future of warfare. This aircraft could take on roles originally designed for cutting-edge fighter jets. So what makes the B-21 so revolutionary, and could it redefine how the US Air Force fights its battles? Let's dive in. Pilotphotog.com Despite similar appearances, the Raider is no ordinary bomber. It's designed to break through the very toughest air defenses and strike targets anywhere in the world. But what makes it truly stand out are three groundbreaking features that set it apart from anything we've ever seen before. Number one, stealth like no other. The Raider builds on the legacy of the B-2 Spirit, a bomber that features state-of-the-art technology designed to evade even the most advanced radar systems. Despite being in service for over 35 years, we still don't know just how stealthy the B-2 really is. Some experts say the B-2 is nearly invisible to detection. The combination of a tailless wing, top-mounted jet engines, along with special radar-absorbing materials, virtually make the B-2 a flying black hole in the sky. The team at Northrop basically took all these lessons they've learned, along with massive advances in computer technology, and made the B-21 Raider. So when it comes to stealth tech, the Raider will make the B-2 look more like a biplane as compared to an F-15 Eagle. Essentially, whether facing high-tech defenses or contested airspace, the B-21 is built to stay invisible. Number two, future-proof design. What's really exciting about the Raider is its modular design. The B-21 is set up to integrate next-generation technologies as they develop, such as advanced sensors, artificial intelligence, and even directed energy weapons or lasers. Think of the Raider as a flying gaming PC. You can upgrade the RAM, add a video card, or even an extra hard drive, yet you still have the same box the computer came in. This makes the B-21 much more than just a bomber. More on that in a minute. Number three, surprising affordability. All right, it's time to talk money. When it comes to bombers, their toughest opponent isn't usually surface-to-air missiles or even enemy fighters. It's perhaps the oldest adversary there is, money. Bombers have always been more expensive than fighters and as a result are much harder to develop and produce. This is one of the reasons the B-52 will probably outlive all of us. It's still the most cost-effective way of putting lots of warheads on foreheads. Well, here's the kicker. The B-21 is coming in under its initial budget expectations. Compare that to the NGAD fighter program, whose costs are estimated over $300 million per aircraft and rising. I've done a whole video on how the Air Force's NGAD is being put on hold and why the Navy may take the lead in the next-gen fighter program. Watch that video after this one, link in the description below. Getting back to the Raider, the Raider program has turned out surprisingly affordable. The cost for the first batches of B-21s was originally expected to be around $19 billion, but the Air Force has managed to bring that down by 28%, saving over $5 billion. That's a huge deal. So what does this mean for each plane? Right now, the B-21 costs about $667 million per aircraft when averaged over the early production run. While that's a big number, it's very reasonable considering how advanced the Raider is. And remember, as more Raiders are built, that number should come down. Because of its affordability, some experts believe the Air Force might buy more B-21s to take on roles that were originally meant for the more expensive NGAD fighter. And remember, that NGAD program is on hold due to those rising costs. So basically, for the same budget, the Air Force could get more B-21s, giving them flexibility without overspending. This makes the Raider not just a bomber, but a smart financial move for future air power. When the concept for sixth generation first came about, 
The Air Force initially planned for a clear division of labor. The NGAD would dominate the skies, while the B-21 would handle long-range bombing missions. But the Raiders' advanced design is proving it can do much more. By adapting to contested airspace with its stealth and long-range capabilities, the B-21 is perfect for missions in heavily defended areas, places where even the NGAD fighter would require significant support. Along with bombing or strike missions, its modular design allows the B-21 to be fitted with advanced sensors and long-range air-to-air missiles. This means it could take on intelligence-gathering missions and even defend itself against enemy aircraft. Essentially, the B-21 isn't just filling gaps, it's reshaping how we think about modern multi-role aircraft. Another argument for the Raider taking off some of the NGAD's roles is the rise of drones. A single long-range Raider could control waves of drones from a safe distance. Think of a Raider orbiting outside enemy airspace, controlling a strike package of drones. These expendable drones could attack enemy air defenses and even fighters. When the drones finish their mission, the Raider could come in and deliver precision munitions and take out key targets. The Raider's stealth and long range would give it an advantage over almost any fighter. And speaking of range, we have to take a look at areas like the Indo-Pacific, where vast distances are the norm. Here's where the B-21's versatility and range shine. It can stealthily strike high value targets, gather critical intelligence, and even provide air support in contested areas all without requiring a large, costly support fleet. This adaptability is key for the Air Force's evolving strategy. By taking on some of the NGAD's originally planned roles, the Raider maximizes resources and ensures readiness for potential conflicts with near-peer adversaries like China or Russia. Think of it this way, one Raider could accomplish the mission that four NGADs would be required to do. So even though an individual Raider may cost more than a single NGAD, it can perform the job of several NGADs, making it more cost-effective. So where does the B-21 Raider stand today? Northrop Grumman has already delivered the first aircraft for flight testing, with two more undergoing ground testing. Early reports suggest the program is on track and may influence how many Raiders are ultimately ordered. This raises an exciting possibility. Could the B-21's success shift its role from primarily a bomber to a multi-mission powerhouse? And if so, what would that mean for the future of the NGAD fighter program? Ultimately, the B-21 Raider isn't just a bomber. It's a blueprint for how the Air Force is adapting to the challenges of modern warfare. By combining affordability, advanced capabilities, and adaptability, the Raider has the potential to redefine air power in the 21st century. And with the NGAD program facing ballooning costs and extended timelines, the B-21 might not just complement America's next generation air fleet, it could lead it. What do you think? Could the B-21 Raider become the Air Force's top choice for multi-mission dominance? And what does that mean for the future of fighter jets like the NGAD? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more insights into military aviation. Thanks for watching, and now you know. PilotPhotog.com